we are not a typical traditional AI organization. So we typically say, you know, technology is everywhere, but value is not. And how do we actually work through customers and with our customers through the journey? Where do you extract value? How do you map their uh, touch points? How do you map their workflows? How do you map their business? I'm Andrew Hanna, uh, CEO of uh, Zaintech as part of uh, Zain Group. Uh, we are the ICT and digital arm of the group. We're operating across uh, seven countries uh, where the group is present. And we're also representing the group in uh, the UAE as uh, the ICT and digital arm, uh, looking after uh, various lines of business such as cloud, cybersecurity, digital solutions, uh, drones, robotics, uh, data, system integration. So. We are the arm um, transforming to a techco from a typical telco. So the whole uh, last three and a half, almost four years now, um, since we started to consolidate and amalgamate all the different business to business and enterprise parts of Zane Group under one umbrella, it has been really the focus has been on building the team the capabilities and continuously looking at where are we having uh, demand from our customers, our enterprise customers, and how do we fulfill that demand? So we're now operating across you know, seven countries, across a number of lines of business. So our cloud, cybersecurity, digital solutions, data practice, drones and robotics, as well as obviously advisory and digital transformation. So decent system integration, obviously, it is one of the acquisitions that we have made recently over the last 12 to 18 months to strengthen our positioning and our reach in the region. So now the whole idea of us is to go to customers with a integrated value proposition to take them through that digital transformation journey. How do we plug in the gaps? How do we make sure that um, over the last three and a half years, um, capability, the right people, the right presence on the ground, the right partnerships, the right infrastructures in place. That's what we have been concentrating on. So we subscribe to the idea that we have to, you know, as they say, eat your own dog food, as they say. So for us, we are adopting AI in a lot of the activities that we are doing especially in managing our cloud business, our NOC, our SOC, and so forth. Furthermore, we are not a typical traditional AI organization. So we are not coming up with the models. What we are doing in our position specifically is to make sure our customers make sense of the AI investment. So where we see value for our customers is by going in and saying, show me what in you have invested in let me work with you, make sure you get value from that investment in technology. So we typically say, you know, technology is everywhere, but value is not. And how do we actually work through customers and with our customers through the journey? Where do you extract value? How do you map their uh, touch points? How do you map their workflows? How do you map their business? And understand where AI case studies and where are the use cases that you're able to implement with partners or with our own team to actually extract value for the customers in their relevant parts of the business. It's a very interesting part of the business. Um, everyone, it's, it has transformed the business over the last two or three years. Um, initially, it was um, a lot of image capture. But over the last two to three years, what we're seeing with the drones and robotics is a great deal of intelligence. So we're seeing them being used for um, asset management. We're seeing them used for construction. Uh, we're using AI models to analyze. Um, we have just recently mapped a very large uh, area, um, you know, in excess of 900 square kilometers uh, across one of the countries to actually identify and uh, provide intelligence around the roads and the road facilities. Um, we're seeing construction work being used and with a degree of AI 
to actually uh, look at the degree of completion. We're using uh, drones and robotics in oil and gas a great deal. So pipeline inspections, asset inspections for towers, for pipelines from the outside, long distances. We're seeing a tremendous amount of conversions between the traditional drones and robotics to autonomous drones, as well as coupling this with uh, digital solutions, specifically for an industry, coupled with AI, where you're able to actually provide intelligent decision-making to the users. That's where we're seeing a tremendous amount of traction with our customers. They're coming in and saying, yes, we understand how you could use the drone or robotic, but what more can you do? And how can you give me faster decision-making? That's what we're seeing. Look, energy management is not just extending into oil and gas. I think it's part of our sustainability story. So um, our proposition around sustainability is something that we're very conscious of. As Zane Group itself, it's something that Zane Group is very much focused on. Um, we have a big uh, push and a big focus around the whole group across the seven countries of sustainability. Zane Tech is no exception. We're taking a bit of a different approach because we're saying, how do we actually help organizations with their sustainability journey. Um, energy management in one of those areas for us. So obviously we're doing a lot of digital solution work, adopting digital twin, adopting uh, various vertical energy solutions with partners that are allowing our customers to see what they're doing in the facility management. How do you actually manage your facilities much better in a more efficient manner, in a more effective manner? How do you drive um, decision-making around energy usage. That's the first step we were seeing right now, is that the intelligence and the data, how do you use data to start translating that into decision-making to be able to um, manage your energy consumption um, in a more smart way, in a more efficient way. And we're, again, working with our customers on a um, very transparent basis where we're actually identifying and seeing what kind of percentage savings from their bills um, and the consumption on a regular basis, whether it's a quarterly or a yearly basis. And we're monitoring that as part of our core success with them. Look like every other business, I think the, the challenge that we have a lot right now is one an internal, one is external. I think internally finding talent identifying talent, keeping that talent uh, engaged, motivated, uh, rewarded. And we are in the business of, you know, managing services for customers. So our talent is extremely important for us. So that's always a, a you know, surround yourself with the right people, make sure they, you know, you have them and they will continue to look after the business. So that goes without saying. Externally, look at it, it's not so much of a challenge as when you're operating across multiple markets, each market has a uniqueness. Each market has a different degree of maturity, uh, different partners, different areas of focus. So you have to, from day one, build your model, build your DNA as a regional organization. We have been regional from day one. Um, we are leveraging, obviously, the Zane Group capability across the markets, but more so also, we are executing locally. So having that regional power with local execution, making sure that the partners are clear on your vision, how you translate this to customers, how you deliver to customers, being conscious obviously of the promises we make, um, where we do deliver on those promises, becomes, it's not a challenge, but each country has a uniqueness and a different level of uh, market maturity that we need to keep pace with. So that's just, you know, business as usual. Look, I think um, nothing in, it goes with our challenges, especially when you're starting something new. So moving a telecom organization from um, a traditional communication service provider where you're doing you know, B2B and B2C to a tech co is obviously a challenge on its own. So mindset is different. Um, that transformation, whenever you're doing a transformation, um, doing something new, it comes with its own challenges. I think credit to the group 
uh, credit to the group management as well as uh, the opcos as well as the board the tremendous support they have given us um, has made a huge difference for us um, and that's something that we're very proud of but also very grateful you know um, it is uh, not something that is lost on us where we know that obviously being part of a big group makes a huge difference we are the incumbent as an operator in many of the com you know the countries where we are present that gives us a huge advantage it gives us an advantage of being known gives us the credibility advantage how you deliver on that and how you move towards the new services is where you then you know prove your worth so that has certainly been something that we're very proud of and we've been you know privileged to do that um, the group has been very supportive in terms of the acquisitions that we have made, the capabilities that we are building, and the independence that we have enjoyed, which is, again, something that um, is not lost on us and has been one of the key success factors. How do you strike a balance between being close but being different? You are a technology and ICT, a digital organization. Uh, you are part of big group. You are uh, operating regionally, but you are servicing your sister companies locally through their operations and to their customers as well. So how do you strike a balance between going direct or going via um, your sister company? So we've had to, you know, we've had to basically strike that balance. It has been um, part art, part science. Um, it, you know, we've managed the challenges. Otherwise, we would have not been able to, to grow and enjoy this. Um, we continue to work very, very closely with the group. We continue to um, enjoy the support. Um, and, you know, I guess the best thing to do is to show the success. The more success you're showing, uh, the more, you know, continued uh, growth and continued support you get. Look at, I mean, there's quite a few. So I'm not, I mean, look, building... Zane Tech itself is a success story in its own, honestly. Um, what we have done, how we have consolidated assets, how we have acquired and integrated organizations in a small period of time, um, how we have built a culture uh, within a culture, I think that's again, is very important. How do you take a, a corporate culture and then also align yours with that? I mean, these are all success. Look, I mean, the customer success stories goes without saying. I think that's what we're here for. That's the bread and butter, and that's why we exist. So there's quite a few of those. Seeing a customer come in and show you in numbers um, a before and after picture of where they were, or being able to say, I have you know, saved you X, or I have transformed your business from X to Y, that's what we exist for. That's, we're very, very proud, and we have a lot of success stories and case studies around that. Um, but I think when you look at it holistically about the creation of the entity and the transformation to a tech co and how do you actually build that model, I think that's been the greatest success story and that we're all very, very proud of. And we continue to do that. So it goes back to what I was saying about each country has a different um, unique situation which we need to be conscious of. Uh, so whether it's the UAE or Saudi Arabia and, and others as well. So we need to be conscious and work with, with partners and with our operations on the ground. I see tremendous value coming through the, the region, honestly. Um, not just in terms of the thinking, but when you have a region that is investing, that is conscious of the future, that is youthful uh, in terms of the talent, that is investing into the talent, the local talent as well. Um, that transformation is, is a very good story for us to be part of. We want to and we are happy to be part of that and at the center of it. How do we take advantage of it for our customers? That's exactly what we are conscious of. So we're working with governments, we're working with the regulators, we're working with our sister companies and our partners in each one of those operations and each one of those countries to actually come up with a very unique proposition for where that market is at. So we're seeing some markets that are still at the early stages of AI, for example. We're seeing markets that are much more advanced in the world of AI, where the thinking and the regulation is perfect for that um, environment. 
And we're basically accelerating our data play, for example, our smart solutions, our partnerships in those markets. Some other markets we're still working towards, for example, the infrastructure play, saying let's get the infrastructure in place properly and then we will build upon that. And we're working again with the regulators and with the government bodies into those markets to make sure that we are early um, into that journey. So, you know, horses for courses, each market is a bit different, but we're seeing a lot of traction in every single one of the markets. With something we're very, very conscious of, Zane Group has a huge focus on sustainability, as well as Zane Tech being the technology, digital and ICT arm of the group. So that for us means what can we start looking at in smaller parts? I think having very large, grandiose visions are great, but then to achieve them, I think you need to go down to very short term, medium term, tactical steps that allow you to measure success, adjust accordingly, but then be able to come back and say, I am providing this value to my customers. I am helping them on their journey, whether it's the technologies that they're implementing, their footprints, um, what does it mean for them? What does it mean for their industry? And adopting that accordingly. For us, being certainly asset light in some cases, um, being conscious of the partners that we are uh, working with, being conscious of their sustainability goals that it matches with ours, and then extending that to our customers and our operations um, on a local level is also something that we're very conscious of.